Hello everybody and welcome back to our look at the epistle lesson for this coming Sunday. Um, yeah, we're in ordinary time and we're going to really get into the flow of things where we're not just kind of picking um, an epistle lesson that fits with the theme of the gospel lesson for the day. We're going to be just running right through one of Paul's letters or one of the other letters that are in the New Testament. And in this case, it is with the Apostle Paul. And it's in 2 Corinthians. We're not quite at the very, very beginning. We're going to be jumping in here in, in chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5. So we've missed a little bit of it. That, that would have been, if depending on how Easter fell, we could have had some of those other um, readings, but we don't. But anyhow, let's make a long story short. Paul has started the Corinthian church, and he loves the Corinthian church. But, man, it is one that gives him the most headaches of any of his other churches. It seems, and we have to realize, this is what was happening back then. There's no centralized church so to speak you have a bunch of apostles who are going out and spreading the gospel but you also have other jesus followers who were probably converts in some of these churches who now are also excited and led by the spirit of god to go out and spread the good news well apparently some of these other jesus followers weren't on the same page as the Apostle Paul. And some of them were even teaching things that Paul considered to be heretical, not true to the faith. So the Apostle Paul has to try to put things straight with the people at Corinth to, because, uh, well, some of these other Jesus followers who were in, the, in town were really giving it to Paul, uh, just basically bad-mouthing him. And it wasn't a very good thing. So Paul has to, to defend his apostleship as well as defend some of the things that he has spoken to the people and written to the people. Okay, so that's kind of the background of these letters. Now, we only have what's listed as 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. There are actually, as you, as you look at the internal evidence just from these letters, there's actually four different letters that the Apostle Paul sent. All right, and 2 Corinthians seems to be a compilation of a couple of those letters, just the way it's put together, and, you know, there's no uh, rhyme or reason from him going from one subject to another at certain times. It's just, it's just kind of goofy, but we'll leave that up to the scholars to discuss and decide, and if we run across one of those times, I'll let you know. But anyhow, we have this part. It's toward the beginning. Uh, our reading is going to be... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 5. Well, actually, it's cha uh, verse 13. 13 through uh, chapter 5, verse 1. And I do have to say this. I don't know why the Revised Common Lectionary stopped at uh, verse 1. Read all the way through verse 5. That's better. We don't get those verses any other time. So read all the way through. So... 413 through 55. Five. Read all of that. It makes a lot more sense. But what Paul is getting at here is the fact that, uh, and even a little before this, he talks about it, uh, he's undergone a lot of really bad stuff for the sake of the gospel. See, the Apostle Paul, he was... He was kind of riding high in the ranks of the Jewish people, especially with his going out and and beating up on Christians, really. I mean, dragging them out into the streets and persecuting them and and who knows what all else. He was the one that stood there as Stephen was being stoned to death, holding the coats of those who were throwing the stones. Yep, ah, good old Paul. Uh, some have gone so far as to call him a murderer. We don't really know. All we know is he drove a lot of persecution of those early Christians. Why? Because he felt they were heretics. And now he has the same thing happening within the Christian realm, where some of these Jesus followers are come and, and preaching gospel that Paul says that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's, that's not right. So in this portion 
of Scripture. He not only has gone through a little defense of his faith and his actions as an apostle, but he's encouraging the people of Corinth to hang in there, to hang tough, to, to realize that um, we go through difficult times as God's people, and it, it's not going to be a bed of roses, this thing called the journey of faith. Even as Jesus, who was the author and perfecter of our faith, yeah, even as Jesus was one who... Um, was willing to non-violently go up against the opposition of those who were violently opposing him. So we must do the same things. And it's kind of a neat thing. We know that Paul also worked a regular job as well as going out and being an apostle. And one of the regular job that he did was one that he could take with him. It was tent making. And so we come to this, uh, the very end of the reading for this coming up Sunday, where he says, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Here, he's, he's jumping right in and, and using something that he's well aware of, a tent, you know. And tents... They, they wear out. They kind of lose their waterproof quality after a while. Um, they get frayed at the edges. Uh, you know, pretty soon you got to get a new one. Well, Paul's referring to this body of ours. It just wears out after a while. And for Paul, a lot of that meant just the, the beatings he was taking and the hardships he had to endure because of his faith. We know he was in prison several times. At the very end, he's beheaded on a road just outside of Rome. So his earthly tent does get quite beat up. But he said, you know what? We, all along, the thing that we realize is this whole resurrection of Jesus from the dead is about us too. We will be resurrected. And as Jesus was resurrected, in his body, it was a, a resurrected body, a new body. We, too, are going to have new bodies. And in this instance, he's referring to it as a tent, a new building, a new tent that we are going to be housed in, so to speak. He's using a little bit of dualistic language. Um, it's kind of separating material from spiritual, but Paul goes at great lengths otherwise throughout his writings not to do that. He's, he's talking in terms that the people of Corinth would readily understand using their language, so to speak. Okay? <clears throat> but for him, there is no sharp dualism going on there. We have a body, a body that wears out. We will have a body, a resurrected body, just as Jesus did. And so the hope of the resurrection isn't just that, hey, Jesus rose from the dead, and now he's going to help us all escape from these earthly bodies of ours. No, Jesus is going to be there welcoming, us, welcoming all of us into his presence and our new resurrected earthly bodies when the time comes. In the meantime... We've got things to do. We've got work to do. And that work is to share the love of Christ with a, a hurting world. And we all take part of, in that. He's going to say a lot about that in 2 Corinthians. Now, as we go along week by week, just be prepared. 2 Corinthians isn't the easiest thing to work through. There's some, some difficult language. No, I'm not saying bad language. It's just that it's kind of tough to understand. Um, and we have to really work hard at it. So it, it's going to be interesting. Let's put it that way. But it's a very, very good letter. And I think a very important letter in understanding Paul, his missionary journeys, and what he wants us to know about the reality of Jesus in our lives. So... We know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, you know what? There's going to come a day where it's folded up and put away for good. 
We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That day is there for you and for me. In the meanwhile, keep patching up that old tent that you live in. We can do it. God's blessings be with you.